Hello everyone, hope you are well on this Friday afternoon. It is September 6th here in North Georgia. It is mid to high 60s, cloudy, a little bit of rain, and I love it. It feels awesome out here. It's, this feels great. It really does. Um, welcome. I welcome any rain we can get too. But anyway, hope it is good wherever you are. We are heading into a weekend. Want to cover a couple of things. More fallout from the high school shooting that happened at Appalachia High School in Winder, Georgia, which is not far from where we live. It's very close. It's like a 15, 20 minute ride from our house. It can happen everywhere. It can happen anywhere. Also, uh, some other news that was uh, that, that came out today I will go through also I have a terrific passage that I will share with you towards the end of the video you do want to stay tuned for that also I want to mention a prep I meant to mention this yesterday and I just got fired up on what I was talking about but a prep that is not talked about as much it, it, it should be talked about more you know we should bring it up more I bring it up every now and then but I hadn't in a while and I mean, some other channels probably have, I know they have at times, but anyway, this is something we need to work on. So stay tuned for that. But first, with some quick updates, I saw where more fallout from this high school shooting, and this is just awful. I know this, this whole event's been terrible. Uh, they get canceled school for that, the rest of this week, but it looks like the district's going to go back to school starting Monday. That shooter, 14 years old, I still can't get over that, 14-year-old kid, a guy, a boy, is going to be tried as an adult, appeared in court this morning, and was told, you know, what he's facing, and they told him the maximum sentence he could get, he could possibly get, is life without the possibility of parole. At first, they said he could get the death penalty, but he is a juvenile. It's 14 years old so apparently in Georgia and I don't know all the laws all the laws but Georgia but uh, but apparently since he's a, a, a juvenile the maximum he can receive is life without parole my guess this is my prediction my prediction is that he will be sentenced to life with the possibility of parole, which I do not agree with. I think he should get life without the possibility of parole. Now, in uh, the county he's in, Barrow County, I don't know. Uh, in Barrow County, he might, get, he might get the max. He might get there. Now, if it was in Athens, Clark County here, it'd be the, it'd be the least. It, it would be definitely be with the possibility of parole. Anyway, uh, that's what he's facing. The other big news on that is the father was arrested yesterday, and or yet or late yesterday, and he was charged with several things: second degree murder, involuntary manslaughter, cruelty to children. He's facing a lot of stuff, you know, which he probably should. The kid's like 14. They had been inter interviewed by the FBI last year about the weapons and all. He apparently gifted this weapon to the boy. I mean. He's 14. Uh, so, you know, they're going to make an example out of that guy. Um, also, the ant, I mentioned yesterday, the ant's a little bit, a bit, not, a, a bit, a bit off kilter, making kind of uh, a loose cannon on, online, making different weird, weird comments. Also, I saw where the mom has a rap sheet that goes back to 2007. So this is a troubled family. Um, evidently apparently uh, so also the more disturbing part of all this even more well equally disturbing I guess is news coming out that for other districts in Georgia more threats made by young people students one was a, I think one or two of them were was a grown person a grown man but most of these threats have been coming in since this shooting against their school districts, against their schools or other schools in their area. Uh, so students have been arrested all over the state over the last couple of days because of this. This is sick. We are, this is a sick world, y'all. It's sick. 
They were online threats made after this shooting. Forsyth County, Newton County, Fulton County, Monroe County, Gwinnett County, of course, Pickens County, Rockdale County, I'm not surprised, Oconee County, Hall County, Jackson County, the county we live in. Sick. The one in Jackson County, the kid made an online threat saying he was going to finish the job that was started by this 14-year-old here at Appalachia. Good news is they've arrested all these people, hauling them in court before the judge. Now, you know, I don't know what they're going to get in Gwinnett or Clark County, but I tell you what, if you do something like this in Jackson County or Barrow County, it ain't gonna be, it's probably not going to go well for you. Uh, no. Those judges will not play. They do not play. Hall County, too, probably, in Oconee. I mean, I would not want to be thrown in jail in those places. All right? Uh, but, but it's sick. I mean, this is a sick... It, it just really is, y'all. And, 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 and somebody said, well, they're probably wanting... They're doing this. The kids are probably doing this to, to cancel class, which they have. They got to take it seriously. That might be true, but dang. Okay, so you're going to get your classes canceled for a while, but now you're going to be brought up on charges. You gotta have a record now. You might do some jail time. They should. They should be thrown in jail for a while. Teach them a lesson. Make an example out of them. Something's gotta be done. The family unit has broken down. And what I mean by that is whether whether it's one parent, two parents, three parents, whether it's a blended family, I don't care. But there's there's there still could be discipline. There can be values instilled in children. That's not happening. There's no role models, or very few role models. These kids are just out there willy-nilly, come under bad influence. And then when they grow up, heck, even before they grow up, they're doing this kind of stuff, this foolishness. And it's like there's no fear of consequences. There's no fear. There's got to be consequences swift, severe consequences. There must be. I know, I get fired up about this. Okay, moving on. Trump sentencing is delayed. It was going to be on the 18th of this month. It has been delayed to November 26th. That will be after the election, if there's an election. And if it's on the 26th and we have an election, will the election be decided by the 26th? That's another question. <laughs> That's not guaranteed. Should be interesting. Okay, week, a week jobs uh, report. August payrolls grew by less than expected numbers in the, in the United States. But then they said unemployment is down 4.2%. I don't believe that for one half a second. Half a second, I don't believe it. Payrolls are down. So a week, a very weak jobs report came out. It affected the stock market, of course. Um, there's an obvious slowdown in the economy that keeps that keeps happening. Keep your job if you're working, if you have to work. Keep your day job. Keep your job for now. I mean, do what you do what you can. All right. Um, food lines are growing. The food lines, uh, food banks, uh, the, the demand is growing. I hear from a lot of you, and also what I see out there in the community as well here. Um, that that continues to be a challenge. It's going to get worse. Also, grocery at the same time, grocery prices continue to, 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 to just go up. Uh, I hear from a lot of you guys. I, I see it on other videos. We see it uh, in living color when we go to the store ourselves, of course. Um, no matter what we do, you know, no matter if we just get, you know, even if you get, uh, if you try to, to go around to different stores and, and try to get a better deal, uh, you know, then you're using up gasoline too. Cold War Prepper made a comment about that. He's, he's right on. I mean, yeah, if, they're, if the stores are right in close proximity, you might be able to save a few bucks, but <clears throat> you got to look at the whole thing. Are you traveling miles away to save 50 cents somewhere? You got to look at all, the whole picture. That was a great, a great point made by him. Shout out to Cold War Prepper. Uh, many are struggling. 
over 70% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. It's probably higher than that. Record credit card debt. Credit card debt among Americans is at an all-time high. And I'm not surprised at that when I see the lines, the long lines that are still wrapped around uh, places like um, Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, you name it. I mean, it's, it's, I saw where some chicken place, some new chicken, Dave's Chicken or something like that opened in Conyers, Georgia, uh, a week or so ago, and there were lines and people wrapped around it and hours to wait. Man, okay. I, I, you know, I, I'd wait till, wait till it dies, wait till the, the, the newness wears off or something. Uh, okay. Go for it. Uh, not me. Um... We're getting to where we're very choosy about where we go out to eat when we do it. We pretty much are down to just a couple of local places. I'm trying to support local when we do eat out. In fact, I'm going to grab some here in a little while. The local, local owned. Support that. And they haven't raised their prices that much. And it's very good quality. The people are good. All right, so be choosy how you spend your dollars, people. Prep a prep. Oh, real quick. Well, this kind of goes together, I guess. Uh, United States, I just saw this before I started recording. United States, uh, to resume mandatory reporting of COVID, hospitaliz COVID hospitalizations, voluntary reporting had dropped down to 33%. Well, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much endemic. I mean, it's like a cold now. In most cases, now, I know there are uh, cases that, that really are tough on people, so it's all individual. I've heard from some of you that it just knocked you flat on your back for weeks. And that is going around. I think there's different little strains going around. Um, I think the majority of the strains are not super severe. But they said that there's a summer wave that's been going on. Yes, there has. But they're making this mandatory now for hospitals to report hospitalizations. It says the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid are requiring data on respiratory illnesses and patient demographics that's interesting we have an election coming up of course uh oh the timing oh the timing yeah so they're, they're trying it's like that's like that's the only hand they have left right now i don't know for a while it was the bird flu for a while it was the uh i don't know we still got the mpox rolling around somewhere i haven't heard that much about that lately uh, this disease X, whatever that's supposed to mean. Now they're coming back, circling back, circling back with this. I don't know what to believe. Um, there are people getting sick out there with stuff. Um, but let's just take care of our bodies the best we can, y'all. Take care of our immune systems, all right? The best we're able to. Another part of doing that is the prep I was going to talk about. Physical prep physical walk move a body in motion tends to stay in motion okay um i think i said that right but uh it's been a long week it's been a long week long day but uh we need to keep our bodies moving walk I'm not saying you got to be able to run a half marathon. No, I'm not saying that. If you can, that's awesome. That's awesome. But we're all at different ages, different capabilities. You know, everybody's different. But if you can increase your capacity just a little bit, it helps so much. It helps so much. And you ain't even got to lose weight. But if you get moving, get your body moving, I, I, I need to do better at that. I'm, I'm working on it working on it walking the doggies a little more get them walking get me walking this dog is working on it too he's doing well but uh, I think the best you know if we can increase that just a little bit move the needle strength I'm not saying you got to go out and lift weights or something like that but even just um, cardiovascular wise walking moving if, if 
depending on what goes on, if something were to go down, electricity, power grid, even for even temporarily, you might have to walk for a while. You might have to ride a bike. If you got a bike, ride a bike instead of, you know, up to the corner store or something like that. How good a shape are you in? Are you going to be in trouble? Can you walk up some, some stairs for a while? Can you walk up and down some stairs and not be taken out for a while, you know? You know what I mean? So, um, I'm not a medical expert, but I'm just saying if we can increase our uh, physical fitness just a little bit, it makes, it makes a huge difference. All right, I'm going to go to a passage from... This is a really good one. This one spoke to me. I guess because I'm older. You'll see. First uh, Timothy. First Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy. Um, the book was a uh, letter written from Paul to Timothy. Instruction concerning various duties towards the older and the younger. Now, this particular one is, again, chapter 5 first few verses first Timothy do not sharply rebuke do not sharply rebuke an older man but rather appeal to him as a father to the younger men as brothers the older women as mothers and the younger women as sisters in all purity it's a blessing to grow older Let's, let's treat our older folks uh, with respect. Um, at least extend that, you know. Don't be a doormat by any means, of course. You can rebuke them, but do it with respect. And as our younger folks, we can also extend respect to them. And, and I'm, I'm guilty sometimes of, of casting a big uh, uh, brush on the younger generations in a... In a um, not really negative way, but sometimes in a negative way, you know. But on the other hand, some of the best employees I've ever worked for or worked with and had worked for me are younger people. That could be my children that are the same age as my children or younger. And, and they can have great work ethics. Some of them don't. But a lot of them do as well. So, um... Even now, some of the ones that are that I work with now, it's a broad range of ages on the team that I work with, and the younger ones are good. They're really good. I mean, that's they, they get after it too, just like us. And they got all that. They got a lot of energy. So let's utilize that. You know, the older folks. I'll concentrate on that because most of us here are older. I know, not all of us. Not all of us. Um, we can learn a lot from our older. Brothers and sisters, family members, the ones that you want to talk to, of course. Um, but they have some wisdom, you know, and some things that we may not be thinking. They may look at things a little differently, and it might kind of pique your interest and, and, and make you think about, oh, I didn't think about it that way, or I haven't really thought about that situation in that light, you know. So be open. Be open. I need to work on that, too. Be open. You know? We can't all agree on everything. All right? Okay, going into a weekend, let's be safe. Stay close to Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you soon.